East is fast becoming up north. Many years ago, I had journeyed to the Amadabelu University's area during my days of, you know, trying to get admission into the university. I had the most peaceful time ever. I still remember it. It feels like yesterday. North was so beautiful, lovely and safe. I moved freely without worrying about anything. The northerners were so kind and welcoming. Today, the case is totally different. Up north is plagued with high level insecurity and it keeps getting worse by the day. While we're still battling with, you know, the incidents of up north, we now have the eastern part of Nigeria to deal with. How this escalated so quickly is still very surprising to me. It started with the regular Monday sit at home and now it's graduated into cold blood murdering from supposedly unknown gunmen. It's actually getting scarier if you think about it. What is unclear to me is the identity of the supposedly unknown gunmen. I'm even more appalled that one man is sitting somewhere and dishing out irrational instructions to some set of individuals in the name of fighting for a just cause. I don't know if IPOB has done more harm than good for the Easterners Going to the East now is a dangerous adventure. You won't believe it. On the other hand, we're now seeing consecutive kidnappings successfully being executed, and it's almost like we're helpless. What is the government doing to return normalcy here? For me, it's either of two things. The government created these insecurities or the government is totally clueless about what to do. You know, it feels like Nigeria has become a comedy skit. And guess what? The joke is on the masses. You know, I served in uh, mm. during my time of NYC. And like that, I had the privilege of traveling up north too. Several mm. times I've been to, yeah, northern as a nice people. I ate their food, I enjoyed their food. And then when I served in Onitsha too, I traveled to other parts of Southeast. Southeast yeah. I enjoyed their food too. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I'm a kind of person that like traveling. I like traveling, especially at night. Take a luxurious bus, travel at yeah, night, long it's distance. So cool and peaceful. But since I finished my NYC, since that year I rounded up my NYC in 2018, I don't think I can boldly travel as before mm. without being scared or worried. Mm. Uh, it's quite unfortunate. Now, the issue of IPOB, I think young people are misguided. Some young individuals, some young Nigerian individuals, unfortunately, are misguided and being deceived by perpetrators of evil who want to profit from, from evil and um, disturbing the peace and telling these people they are freedom fighters. You're not freedom fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, they said Biafra is an ideology. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. But same with uh, Oduduwa, is an ideology, right? Oduduwa Republic, Arewa. same with Arewa. Mm. It's not wrong to identify. Everybody has a right of self-determination. But it becomes a problem when your own idea begins to cause problems. Do you know that the South is, 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 is the center of business? On each, have you been to the Jami market before? They sell crazy there, like business activities are going on top notch. Go to Aba markets. Now, because of Citatun, businessmen cannot conduct businesses effectively. Mm. You know what is even giving me concern? This second Niger bridge that they just opened, you saw the news that they've opened the second Niger bridge so that people can access traffic easily from exactly. coming from Asaba route, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have to go through the Onitsha Head Bridge. You go to that side and divert to ease traffic. Now, how many people are willing to even travel on that road? Mm -hmm. Are there enough security there? People travel all the way. The last time I traveled to Imo State for a conference, I was invited by a friend who, by the way, is not an indigenous of Imo State, mm -hmm. is not a resident of Imo State, but he wanted to have a conference, a leadership conference. He decided to use Imo State because he loved the place. Mm -hmm. And we traveled all from different parts of Nigeria. We converged there, I think, some days to Christmas. Guess what? We enjoyed the food there and everything. But now we can't do that kind of thing. We are scared of insecurity, disruptions, kidnapping. It's not supposed to be so. We have our Igbo brothers traveling down from Germany and some other parts of the world, Europe. They are coming down for holiday. Christmas holiday. Many of them would like would not like to come with their children mm. if they must come. 
So you see this thing. I think it's, the problem is not um, Igbo problem or Southeast problem or, IPO, or just Biafran problem. No, this is just some selfish individuals perpetrating evil, trying to use young people against the government for their own selfish game. Mm. So I just implore everybody, every stakeholder, on her knees in the Igbo, please try and talk to your, to your youth. Tell them not to be involved or be used for criminal activities. Same thing with our Northern brothers. Please, the traditional institutions in the North should work with the government to see how they can work with uh, um, community leaders to educate and enlighten young people so that they will meaningfully engage, not to be involved with banditry. So Thank Nigeria you, Roger. Um, let's quickly go to Hussein, who is in Turkey. Um, join us all the way from Turkey. Um, so, Hussein, what, what do you think about, you know, I mean, you, like I said earlier, many years ago, it's very much, you can travel with ease and you're not worried about anything, right? Um, what do you think with what's happening right now? I mean, the EPUB in the East, the non gone man, right? What are your thoughts particularly about it? So, um, my thought has always been simple. I think it still boils down to ideology. So today, uh, I've been privileged to actually travel across the country to the far north, to the far east, to, you know, middle bed and what have you. But one thing I, I keep telling people is, you keep condemning uh, working on tribal sentiment or condemning one tribe or religion to another because you don't actually have the exposure of, you know, traveling from one place to another and see the reality yourself. What I can say is, when money, you know, what I see in the eyeballs, the east and the south south, is a typical statement when they say money is the root of all evil. That's what I would just conclude it to. So if we are not actually changing that mindset, I, I, I will try and simplify it. I, I've been in Nasaba for for a while. I drive, I drive, you know, I drive, I drove down to Asaba, and I can see a lot of things along the road. In the early hour of the morning, I I woke up, I see guys standing up as, as early as 7.30, 8 a.m., setting up tables, putting drinks on the table. And like, what happened? Are these people not going to the work? They say, oh, their wives, their, their, their ladies go to the farm. I was like, what? What the hell is this, you know? And the same thing goes back to the IPO, indigenous uh, people of Biafra. Yeah, there is a cause of marginalization and stuff like that. But you have this this ability. You have representation in the House of Assembly, in the in the House of Rep, in the Senate, to push a bill, right? But be, because people already understand that, oh, I have shared. I was in the protocol of recent this year. I went to uh, Waterside or something like that in the evening. Meanwhile, I went for uh, an event where the commissioner of police said, if you are not used to this environment, please go back to your hotel. But I need to pick up something on the other side. Before you know it, I just heard gunshot. Quack, quack, quack. What happened? The people that like, those guys have started, mm -hmm. you know. And when you look at it critically, it's about money. Because if you, okay, shells are there, you know, uh, uh, some petroleum companies are there that you, you feel entitled to, that you must collect your own share. The same Tompolo that things like is working against the government is the same Tompolo that is working to support the government to discover our country. You know, the, the reality is this. Everything is all about money. On our government and stuff like that, if you don't protect their interests and get money, it's just about money on the high side. People are just thinking about money. How do I make money? How do I, you know, be selfish, be greedy about money. It's all about money. But if you want to curb this insecurity, I tell you, let everybody be included. And how do you get included? If you are getting horror it is, let their senator, honorables, push a bill to say, for every, uh, my, uh, every oil block within this vicinity, social percentage to go to the environment, to the society, to develop the society. You know, with that, there won't be all this marginalization. You have the power. Push a bill, get the support, and make it work, make it a law, so that you get entitlement, not like you feel entitled. It now becomes not a privilege, but a right. You get? So when you go to the north, 
and uh, people talk about the north and stuff like that. The 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 uh, that is a case of the res national resources that people are fighting for from the south south and and uh, from south south majorly. I can say then the east are actually trying to hide under that as well. When you go to the north, you have people who are farming, but their life cycle is go to the farm. Uh, you know, we come back home, we return back to the farm and what have you and sell. Now, you have a lot of them that are not, they are semi-educated. You see the animals, they are vulnerable. And uh, there, there are some of the leaders who be, be uh, hen, you know, make fortune from them not being educated. And by the time they get to know that this person is actually trying to oppress them, they go away with like individual, like people who get angry and say, no, this thing must end today. That's the level of anger that you can see there. And aside that, you see a situation where that we don't have a working system in Nigeria. You see a soldier who have gone to Sambisa Forest to fight. And he doesn't have a basic amenities, basic welfare. His children have been chased out of school. He's fighting for the interests of the country, but he's not getting the necessary support to even support his own children, upcoming children. Now, what do you expect uh, soldiers like that? You're like, okay, enemy. Okay, I have rifle, I have this, I want to decamp. Give me money so that I can use it to support my family at home. You know, you have corruption everywhere. You also have a situation where people are uh, vulnerable, or the, the vulnerable children moving okay, around. Okay, if you would wrap up, um, yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm actually wrapping up. So, okay. it's like, you have vulnerable children moving around. That mm. 2,000, 5,000 naira can be enticed. You can use it to entice them, and you can use it to fuel insecurity because these people can say, okay, go and do bombs, go and do this and stuff like that. So, I think we need to take responsibility and now focusing on what we need to do beyond greed and sentiment. Thank, Thank you. you so much, um, Hussein, for that. All right. The end always seems to come too soon on The Advocate. However, The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, with the hashtag The Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa with the hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with some of our previous broadcasts, please go to plustvafrica.com for slash the advocate ng and do not forget very important to subscribe to our youtube channel plus tv africa see you next week same time on this station let us keep advocating for a better society it's bye for now Gosh.